Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Event Gems. I am your host, Natasha Wright of the Diamond Butterfly. And today I am joined by my wonderful friend, Michelle Talbert. Yay. So please welcome Michelle to the show. Hi, um, I'm so excited to have Michelle on. Uh, this is the first time I'm recording in the podcast studio. I feel so professional yeah, right now. In the Tyra Banks. In the Tyra Banks room <laughs> here at her power space yeah. in Sunrise. So you guys, if you are in South Florida area, please be sure to come check out, check out this space. I'll definitely be posting the address and social media page so you can check it out further. Okay. So Michelle is the founder of Her Power Space, like I said, the Femme Force Fatale yes. leader of Her <laughs> Power Moves. Yeah. And she's a recovering attorney. Catch that. Trying. And <laughs> you're trying. <laughs> Black Enterprise contributing writer and so many other wonderful and amazing things. And so, Michelle, yes. thank you for being Sasha. here. Yay. Super happy to be here. And it's awesome to have her as my first uh, guest here in the podcast yeah, studio. Cool. So give us a little bit more background about who are you? What yeah. it is that you do? I know Woo. it's a lot, but no, let people know. Short yes. Version, yes. Right? <laughs> well, one of the most important things, I think, yeah. um, about me is that I have come to the space where I really love being in the company of women, of women who are trying to build and really create their dreams mm -hmm. in real life. Yes, right? yes. And so the reason I start with that is because that's not where I started, right? Okay. I started in a place like a lot of us where I don't want to work with women. I don't trust mm. women. I don't, I am a girl, I'm a guy's girl. Mm -hmm. I only hang with guys. Mm -hmm. And what I found through having relationships with people like you, like mm -hmm. Natasha has been an incredible force for good in my life for like six, <laughs> seven years at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because we met online first. Yes. Right? Yes. And so creating the community and really finding out like when you make those heart connections and you really care about making sure that we mm -hmm. all win, mm -hmm. that it's really the buy in is there. And so mm -hmm. I start by saying that because I think it's really important for us to know that if we are going to go far, we yes. need to go together. Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so I moved Moved down to South Florida five years ago, mm -hmm. and you were already waiting for me to get yes, here yes. because you have been following the podcast. Exactly, we had the Her Power Hustle podcast, and um, just really trying to find ways to help women entrepreneurs build their businesses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And by using the podcast and creating the online community, Assist yes. the Power Hustlers, yes, the yes, OGs, yes. we really were able to say, how can I help you? How can mm -hmm. I serve you? And how can I make money too? Yeah. Um, so when I got here, I noticed that a lot of us we're going from Broward to 30, 40 miles away to Miami. That long drive. Yeah. <laughs> to get really great information. And I was like, why are we like you live in our neighborhood in Broward and you live in this neighborhood mm -hmm. in Broward, but we're all 30, 40 miles away mm -hmm. because we were craving mm -hmm. information. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it just hit me like, let's start Her Power Moves Broward, mm -hmm. where we have monthly events, where we come together, where mm -hmm. we give shine to each other's businesses and we connect and we grow. Awesome. And we launched that in 2018 and yeah. we've been going ever since. Yeah. So Michelle mentioned how we even got connected in the first place. Yeah. So when I just started or decided that I wanted to listen to this thing called podcast because right. I heard about it wasn't really sure what the medium was what you know what the information was that was being shared that was a couple of years ago and so I specifically sought out black women um, who had podcasts and so when I was searching through just going through you know some of some of the other business or marketing related podcasts I saw Michelle's podcast and I was like Okay, her power. What was it called? Her, her power hustle. Her power hustle. I was like, oh, okay. I need to. Yeah, I, need to I need to hustle a little bit more. <laughs> I need some more I power. Some more power. <laughs> I'm a her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a her. This is speaking to me. So let me just go ahead and listen to the information. And it was an awesome podcast. Like she had such amazing guests on, and she has a great way of just pulling out information with people that I really liked and appreciated. And so from there, I ended up joining her. Uh, Facebook group, right. right? And so stay connected there. And then, you know, the, when there was an opportunity, I kind of asked an uh, opportunity or, or I was actually looking for someone at the time um, to speak specifically about an issue. And so I posted it in the group. And because of how supportive that group is, like, 
you know, one of the members they rallied behind and was like, hey, like, I know who you could talk to. You could talk to Michelle. And so that's how we ended up actually um, meeting in person. Right. Um, and exactly. since then have been able to do some other amazing, some things, amazing things together. Uh, and so I'm I'm just so happy and blessed to be connected yeah. to you yeah. in the space and everything that you 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 do. Um, so to talk about, so one of your signature talks is Hustle Sparkle all, oh, Sparkle offline. online Hustle offline Sparkle online Hustle <laughs> offline okay <laughs> and i think that she is the queen or the quintessential person to talk about this because um the show is awesome and amazing at making connections and forging um relationships with other people uh but she's also she constantly shows up online so you know online it's like you you're like vying for people's attention you're vying for people to know about you right. and what you have to offer um and so i think that she does that so well and you know that helps to build her community so talk to us about hustling since it's, yeah sparkling online yeah hus- sparkling yeah we're gonna get to we gonna get to spark yeah we're sparkling right now online okay <laughs> in the tower banks so, uh, podcast <laughs> studio um but since this is event gems i want to sure. talk talk specifically about hustling offline yes. first and how do you really um network or make that connections uh, make, make those connections when you're at events because i yeah. think that that's so important for us yeah. to grow our business right and our right. tribe and well, you mentioned that I'm a recovering attorney. Yes. Right? Yes. So that's really where I got bitten by the bug because we have to do something called rainmaking, right? Okay. Which is building business, going out and okay. developing business, which is what all people in business do. I mean, the reality is you have to sell. Yeah. If you're not selling, then you have a hobby. Right. Okay? Right. Right. So I would go to these breakfasts and events and meet really interesting people mm-hmm. who find out where they might have a pain point or need some legal service mm-hmm. and bring that work back to the company, mm-hmm. bring that burnt back to the law firm mm-hmm. and I loved it. Mm-hmm. But I enjoyed the meeting of the people, the learning their stories, mm-hmm. finding out what they needed more than I love coming back and doing the work in the office. Right? <laughs> got you, got so you. the partners were like, oh, Michelle, you kind of junior, that's not you're, really You're out there too work. much now. Yeah, girl, if you don't sit yourself down. Rainmaking, exactly, we got to wrangle you in. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But that was what, 15 years ago mm-hmm. that I realized that that's a passion of mine. Mm-hmm. So in leaving the law or trying to leave the law as much as possible, Mm -hmm. um, I realized that those same skills Mm -hmm. were able to be used for business building and Mm -hmm. business development, right? Because it is, it's all sales. It's all about making connections. Mm -hmm. But what I found was that so many people go to networking events with Mm -hmm. the idea that I'm going to meet as many people as possible. I'm going to give my card to as many people as possible and really don't really have a strategic plan Mm -hmm. for what they're really going for. Mm -hmm, Like, mm -hmm. why are you actually even in the room? Mm -hmm. Let's start there. Mm -hmm, Like, mm -hmm. Is this a place because you need marketing? Is this a place because you need customers? Everyone says they need customers, but sometimes you actually need a strategic partner. Mm -hmm. And so to think strategically and intentionally before you even show up in the room Mm -hmm. as to why you're there. Right. And then say, okay, I am successful if I find two people who do X. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And you connect with them. And that takes a lot of pressure off of you. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you don't have to talk to everybody in the room or give everybody in the room your your card or or information. Mm Exactly. And you Mm -hmm. can make really great connections and then follow up Mm -hmm. when you get back home to your office and say, oh, it was great chatting with you. Mm -hmm. Here's an article about what we spoke about. And those are ways to show up and hustle. Right. 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 Because it's not about a grind or a quick hustle. It's Mm -hmm. really about being strategic. The hustle is a strategy. Right. 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 That's yeah, really what yeah. It is. So it's like, how are you creating those long-term relationships exactly. too? Like nurturing those relationships. Exactly. Because okay. That's everybody good. says you do business with people who you know, like, and trust. That's so true. I can't get to know you or like you or trust you if all you do is hand me your business yeah. card and walk and away. And walk away. Actually, yeah. I don't like you. Yeah. yeah. I don't like when people just hand me their business card and walk away. Yeah, that makes sense. Right? It's it's funny because um, for me, I know that when I initially started my business, everywhere I went, any every networking event that I went to, I was handing out my card to every and anybody. And that was a year that I really made no money. Yes. Okay. Um, my first client actually came from a referral. It wasn't even um, from someone who I had given my business card to. Right. Um, and then the first year, I think I went through my my, my, my box of business cards like really quickly. Mm-hmm. Second year, I was like, all right, well, I need to be more strategic right. about this. And really trying to connect with people on a deeper level, like you're saying, hadn't really mastered it. <laughs> Second year, third year, I think is when I started to kind of like really 
get in my groove and it was more so, all right, well, let me get, actually get your number. Right. Let me get your email and right. I'll follow up with you right now. So I think that that's a really good point. And I, that's why I love what you did with the unnetworking yes. events because Michelle was like, all right, well, you guys are over here networking, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's working. not, it's that's not it's, working. It's that's not working. It it's not an not effective <laughs> way to go about making connections and really right. making business deals. Right. So you came up with the Unnetworking Correct. events. Um, and so that was how you came from sparkling online and hustling offline, offline right? So talk to us about that. Absolutely. I'm glad you brought that up because mm-hmm. as you were talking, I was like, this is just unnetworking right. 101 for sure. Right. And what unnetworking is, is a way that I've devised mm-hmm. to make connections quickly mm-hmm. in a very short period of time, but yet make an impression and get great information back mm-hmm. so that you can then take that information and leverage in a good way Mm -hmm. with ethics Mm -hmm. um, the relationship that you've just created and nurture that. And so what that looks like offline Mm -hmm. when we're hustling Mm -hmm. is that I come up to you, we chat. What... I don't say, what do you do? Mm-hmm. I say, what what brought you out today? What was it about this event that was of interest to you? Mm-hmm. I really want to know something deeper about you than what you do. Right, because exactly. Especially for some people, what they do is not really what they love. Right, right? that's a good so point. So that's a loaded uh-huh. question sometimes. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you even see people get a little put off yeah, guard when you yeah, say, yeah. what do you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So what yeah. does that mean? Yeah. You're putting me on guard. And then the, judging so, me. Exactly. I was just going to say, there's some judgment that comes of along with course, that sometimes too. Of yeah. course. Mm-hmm. So I love to say, what brings you out today? What made you come out today? What was it? Is there a particular speaker you're mm-hmm. interested in? You know, mm-hmm. you can you can really carve that in a really nice way depending on the um, environment that you're in. Mm-hmm. And then they answer. And mm-hmm. then you get start to get a feel for what they're looking for, what their needs mm-hmm. are, what their desires are. Mm-hmm. And then you have a conversation. And, and people say, I hate small talk. And I say, talk does not have to be long to yeah. be deep. Yeah, yeah. You can really oh, that's make a good. Nice connection, right? Repeat that. It's like snap, snap, repeat that. <laughs> Talk does not have to be long yeah. to be deep. Because yeah. I don't want to be held hostage right. in the corner, exactly. Right, exactly. And you're like, oh my God, <laughs> how do I exit this conversation? Right. I don't know how to get out of it. Which okay. I actually do teach people how to do right. that. How you extricate yourself from one of those people. Right. Who like, especially with introverts. Yeah. Right. You're like, okay, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm done. Yes. I can't. I got to go. Yes. But I can't get out of this. Yeah. But even as an introvert, this is one of the things I love to tell introverts is that to feel successful so that you can take some pressure off of yourself Mm -hmm. is to set one or two, three tops goals. Mm -hmm. And when you hit those three goals, Mm -hmm. leave. Okay. If you're uncomfortable in the space, you've you've achieved what you came to do. Mm-hmm. You don't really. There's need no reason to for you to be in it. Yeah, exactly. Because when you don't show up authentically, when you're uncomfortable, mm-hmm. it resonates. People yeah. can tell you're uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. People can mm-hmm. tell when you're desperate for sales. People mm-hmm. can tell when you're uncomfortable or not showing up as yourself. Mm-hmm. And so, really, unnetworking is about creating relationships right. and then nurturing those mm-hmm. relationships because you can meet in person. And then there's like first thing you say, what's your Instagram name? Mm-hmm. So yep. you continue that yeah, relationship. The con- yeah. Online. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's what I, that's what I like about on networking is that it allows you to have like a more authentic connection with Agreed. people. Because um, one of the things that you do is like, what what do you have exactly. and what do you need? Exactly. And so that allows you to be e- easily able to identify, well, that person has what I have or I have what they need. So I can just like beeline for them as opposed right. to, you know, right. going around the room and talking to all these people who aren't necessarily aligned with where I'm trying to go or what it is that I'm trying to right. do or what it is that I need. Right. right. So I really love that. Um, and then so you you really created this community of women here in Broward County um, with the on networking event where yes. women are really feeling like, OK, I could show up as myself. Yes, You know, absolutely. If, if I want to however I want to show up, I will not be judge you know whatever it is that i do i would not be judged for it but um I'm being seen as my possibility, yes. as like who I want to be yes. and and what I want to do. And 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 then there's a community that like really rises up to like support you in that mission. And so it allows you to accelerate and go f- further, exactly. like you said before, right? Um, but it, it seems like out of you doing these on networking events that you now you you you're listening to the women who are attending yes. 
And now you opened up a co-working space. So so talk to me about that transition, yeah. right? Because I think that that's so important how how Michelle transitioned from doing the unnetworking event to now opening up a brick and mortar space and how that event like led her to now be in this place that she is. Um, so talk to us about how you made that transition. Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny because absolutely one of the worst pieces of advice that I never took mm-hmm. <laughs> was, no, you don't want to open a brick and mortar. Everybody does business this online wow right mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. we're doing great we, yeah we just celebrated a month and, woo, it's, woo. Great. <laughs> and it's going really well yeah so super excited about that the community has really shown up yeah and exactly what you're saying natasha in terms of building a community of people mm-hmm. but using other people's spaces mm-hmm. was a bit of a pain point mm-hmm. and so for some of your viewers and listeners who actually do workshops and educational events mm-hmm. and are constantly looking i mean event gems mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. you exactly. are always seeking out yeah, venues exactly. that are appropriate mm-hmm. for your clients mm-hmm. to, to have the type of experience that they want to have. Right, exactly. And after 16 months of really being nomads around the county, mm-hmm. it really got to the place where it was like, you know what? We really need a home. Mm-hmm. We actually need a home. We need a place that we can say, this is cemented. This mm-hmm. is where we do our unnetworking events. But not only that, mm-hmm. where we can actually take the community further and deeper Mm -hmm. because we can reach more people who now say, I want to have my events there as well. Right, right, exactly. So it's Mm -hmm. a way to expand the community so that we have the co-working spaces, but Mm -hmm. we also have the 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 rooms where you can Hello. rent and do your podcast <laughs> or your video or right. make your deals at the Janice Howard room or the conference room. Right. And so it really grew out of both my own pain point, mm-hmm. hoping that other people not necessarily had a pain point, but mm-hmm. at least would show up. Mm-hmm. And they have in droves. And mm-hmm. so many people say the same thing. It's so hard to find a good venue. Mm-hmm. And that's when I'm like, you need to call Natasha. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. So call me if you need an event manager. Exactly. Okay, so hello. We're plugging each other here. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's so that's do. awesome. Uh, so, but I think, and one of the things too that I notice is that people don't leave, you know, so they feel, they feel like it's home. Yeah. So um, talk about um, creating that experience for people where they feel like they're at home yeah. and how can people do that with their own events you know Absolutely. how how have you been able to do that with your on networking events how have you been able to do that you know with hosting events here to really um allow people to feel like okay michelle is home michelle's right. space is home michelle's right. event is home i right. think that that's so important to be able to translate that emotional connection so i guess there's two parts to the question mm-hmm. so before we actually got our own speaks mm-hmm. to be able to create home um you know i mentioned the introverts and Mm-hmm. one of the things that we do in all of our spaces, as you know, mm-hmm. is that we have a Her Power Down section. Mm-hmm. And what that does is it enables our um, attendees who feel like they're introverts, they get a little bit overwhelmed when mm-hmm. they're in the crowds, mm-hmm. but still want to be there because they know it's good for their business, mm-hmm. can sit off to the side and have a place where they're still part of the room. Mm-hmm. No one's going to say, are you okay? Mm-hmm. Is that mm-hmm. or, you know, or mm-hmm. any of that. No one's allowed to ask them anything. Mm-hmm. They can just read recharge their batteries Mm -hmm. and we have loads of women who self-identify in Mm -hmm. our group Mm -hmm. as introverts yep yet in almost two years now August makes two years. Yeah. In two years, no one's ever, no one has ever, ever sat in that seat except to talk to each other. Right. <laughs> so I say that because that is an idea that grew out of me wanting to make sure that people felt comfortable and at home. Uh huh. But then they didn't need it. Right. 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 So I guess the way to look at that is that because I know it's there, I feel more comfortable. Like when you're teaching your kid how to ride a bike mm-hmm. and they think mommy or daddy is still holding mm-hmm. on to the bike mm-hmm. and they go and they go mm-hmm. and they're going really fast and mommy and daddy let go long. Yeah time ago yeah, yeah, yeah. but they just feel that comfortable right. knowing somebody's there who cares right and right. so for me even when we were nomadic it was right. important for me to have our gold chocolate coins on the table yeah. to symbolize prosperity there were things that we did that created an environment that people could come to expect mm-hmm. and then they knew who showed up in the room were going to be people of high quality people who cared people who were generous of spirit mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so then that translated into the space mm-hmm. with bringing those um, pieces that we did mm-hmm. nomadic Mm-hmm. And now in the space with the help of Enid Alasco of Raw Made. Mm-hmm. Shout right? out to Enid. Yes, Enid Amazing is so job. great in yeah. branding. Yeah. This was her first brick and mortar branding opportunity to curate a space. Mm-hmm. And I'm a lover of interior 
interior design. Mm-hmm, so the mm-hmm. two of us came together like wonder twins mm-hmm. and really said, what does this space need to feel? How does it need to feel? How can people excel mm-hmm. and still feel comfortable and at home wherever they are in their business journey? Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how that all kind of bubbled up to the surface. And nice. became her power nice. space. So what I really heard you say is how can you utilize different design elements? Yes. How can you utilize um, uh, areas within your event that um, allows people to experience the event in like a multi-sensory way, right? right? So it's like you you're hearing the content, but you know that okay, I could go sit off to the side if I'm an introvert and not necessarily interact with people if I want. So I feel comfortable enough to be here because right. if I need that moment, then I have that moment. Exactly. But also like bringing in those different elements, like here in the space, there's a lot of um, elements, design elements that say think outside the box or we all win. So those types of ideas, in a similar way, we were talking about um, with the coins, it's like. Like it's allowing you to think about it's allowing you to like break through and be you know? expansive in your and thing. Exactly. Yeah. And be more expansive. Exactly. And, and also there's a sense of familiarity. Mm-hmm. You know, if you come to one of my events, there are certain things that you're going to mm-hmm. see. Mm-hmm. And that's what home is, isn't it? Right. Isn't it that place that wraps us up and as Oprah says, rises up to greet us. Um, but it really wraps us in a hug and it's a place where we have our creature comfort. Right. Because again, remember, you can't show up authentically if you're not comfortable. Yeah. That's a great point. That's a great point. So I love that. I really love that. So uh, I, I think if there is and if there is nothing else that you take away from this conversation, then I think that that's one of the most important things to take away is how can you make make people more comfortable um, and make them feel or make them be able to show up more authentically yes. um, at an event or at a space that that you're you're open up to them, right? So um, I think that. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and let Michelle share one last gem. It could be anything um, that you think that people need to be mindful of or you think that could help people um, who are listening or viewing right now. Um, I often say your vibe attracts your tribe. Mm -hmm. I heard someone else say recently, your vibe creates your tribe. Mm -hmm. And so in the the event space, Mm Think about who you want to attract Mm -hmm. and think about what you want to create Mm -hmm. when they arrive. Mm -hmm. And if you can do those two things, Mm -hmm. they will show up. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so use online methods, offline methods, Mm -hmm. and really allow people to be capital B. Yeah. Right. Yes. um, Joyce Meyer always says, you are not human doings. You are human beings. Yes. I love that. Let people show up as they are. Yeah. But you create that environment. Yeah. And your events will sell out all the time. Yeah. You will have people knocking down your door waiting for the next event. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, Thank you so much, Thank Michelle, you, for joining Tasha. me on another episode of Event Gems. This was so good. Yay. Really, really great information. And I am so happy I'm and honored happy. to yes. have you as my first yes. guest in the Tara, Tara Bang, Bang Studio. <laughs> okay. I just love that it's I a Tara Bang it. Studio. So, yes. yes. Thank you so much for listening and for watching. You can follow me online and stay connected at Event Gems on Instagram. Or you can follow me at The Diamond Butterfly on Instagram and Facebook as well. So, Michelle. Michelle, let people know how they can follow you and stay connected with you online. Absolutely. We are on Instagram and Facebook as Her Power Space, which is our community here in Sunrise in Broward County, Florida. And you can find us everywhere as Her Power Moves. We are everywhere. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, everywhere. So we look forward to connecting with you online or off. Okay. Until next time. See you soon. Bye. Bye.